Now to the ongoing investigation into Russian meddling in last year's election and whether the Trump campaign was in any way involved may have taken a step closer to the president's own family. It was another weekend of damage control for the Trump White House. This following allegations against President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner. On Friday, The Washington Post reported that in December, Kushner discussed with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak the possibility of opening a secret and secure communications channel between the Trump team and Moscow. It adds they considered using Russian diplomatic sites in the U.S. in order to shield their pre-inauguration discussions from monitoring. Several top administration officials, while not confirming the allegations, have come out defending Kushner. Yesterday on ABC's This Week, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly said the idea didn't bother him. It's both normal, in my opinion, and acceptable. There's uh, any way that you can communi communicate uh, with people, particularly uh, uh, organizations that are maybe not particularly friendly to us is, is a good thing. Separately, National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster told reporters he too wasn't concerned. He said, we have back-channel communications with a number of countries. And on CNN's State of the Union, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina questioned the allegations altogether. I don't trust this story as far as I can throw it. The whole storyline is suspicious. I've never been more concerned and suspicious about all things Russia than I am right now. For his part, the president told the New York Times on Sunday he has total confidence in his son-in-law. All this, however, has done little to quell the storm of criticism. Former acting CIA director John McLaughlin told MSNBC he was shocked by the charges. I can't keep out of my mind the thought that if an American intelligence officer had done anything like this, uh, we consider it espionage. And back on ABC's This Week, California Democrat Adam Schiff, the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, said Kushner's access to classified material needs to be re-examined. But I do think uh, there ought to be a review of his security clearance to find out whether he was truthful, whether he was candid. Uh, if not, then there's no way he can maintain that kind of a clearance. Before these latest allegations broke, Kushner's attorney said he'd work with the Senate on its investigation into Russian election meddling. Yesterday, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, Tennessee Republican Bob Corker, said Kushner will still cooperate. With me now to discuss the Kushner allegations and the wider Russia probe are two men with deep knowledge of intelligence and law enforcement. Frank Montoya Jr. spent 26 years in the FBI. He oversaw national security and counterintelligence probes. He joins us from Salt Lake City. And John Seifer served 28 years in the CIA's clandestine service stationed in Russia and Eastern Europe. He also ran counterintelligence investigations within the agency. He's now with the consulting firm Crosslead. Welcome to you both. Um, John Seifer, I'd like to start with you. What is your reaction to this? You said to me earlier that this leak, this particular leak, is different yeah. from other leaks. How so? What strikes me about this, which is so unusual, is this is really hyper-partisanship. It's putting party above country. It's trusting a hostile foreign government more than you trust the duly elected government that's in power at the time. And what's also unusual about this, I think, is many of these leaks, as frustrating as they probably are, the administration, don't strike to the heart of the investigation. This one sounds like it may do so because it, it, it highlights a uh, sensitive collection effort, if in fact true, and also it looks like it gives some information around some of the things we've been seeing around the edges for, for months now. Uh, Frank Montoya, turning to you, what is your reaction to all of this? I mean, you heard the, the administration's defenders, the national security advisor, uh, many people arguing this is nothing, nothing to see here, please move on. What, what is your reaction? You know, John is spot on. I think, you know, some of the other aspects of this, yeah, we get tracked to kinds of communications or diplomacy or however you want to define that, where there is a, a back channel access to uh, a government. But that's usually when you are the government in power, having that communication uh, with another government. What really stands out to me in this one is the discussion, if true, as John noted, uh, about using uh, an, a, nation, a foreign nation state's communication systems, especially uh, a foreign nation state like Russia. It's just, you know, there was, I think a term used this past weekend about either being uh, I incredibly naive or absolutely crazy. I'd say stupid is more like it in terms of uh, just the thought process that had to, to occur if, in fact, that was the discussion. Uh, John, you heard Frank mention this, the idea that, again, if these allegations are true, that 
that Kushner asked the Russians, can we use your facilities, your hardware, to have these communications? Hmm. Why is that particularly troubling? This is a very sophisticated adversary. The notion that we would go and work with them inside their embassy, this is something that just is beyond the pale for professionals. And it almost is, if you want to assume this is naivete by, by the Trump campaign people and Mr. Kushner, it really is like a, a lamb's going in to deal with the lions here. This is a very dangerous thing. People who deal with the Russians in the government follow a whole series of procedures and regulations to, to avoid concerns with espionage and subversion and, and corruption. And it doesn't appear that they did here. Do you think that there is a, uh, another rational explanation for this, that perhaps, as, as some of Kushner's supporters have said, they genuinely wanted to talk to the Russians about Syria and other matters, and this was just maybe a, a, a poorly chosen vehicle for having those conversations? It's possible, but like Frank said, then, then very stupid. Um, Perhaps there's naivete here. Having a back channel is something that governments have done in the past, and there's nothing wrong with that. But my question would be, why the secrecy? The, the president-elect had been talking about changing the relationship with Russia for quite a long time. There would be no need to go to this effort to try to hide from your own government what you're doing. Yeah, if I could add to that, William, you know, it, he, this is also demonstrating a gross d distrust or mistrust of his own intelligence community. If that's what he wanted to do, we could have facilitated that for him, even as president-elect moving into the inauguration and beyond when he becomes the government. This is what we do for our presidents. I know you talk with a lot of agents that are there are some of them who might be in the midst of this actual investigation. What does these ongoing leaks mean to them, do to them, do to their ability to do their jobs? Yeah, from a day-to-day -day perspective, makes it incredibly difficult. You know, who are they going to be able to talk to that's going to want to tell them a straight story? Uh, you know, if it's the, the fear is it's going to show up on a news channel or on cable or on the internet, and so yeah, it it really does make it difficult to to dig into the matters that need to be addressed and you know to put together the pieces of the puzzle that will get us to the end of this thing. But couldn't you also argue that there is a there's a societal benefit that we it's useful for people to know what their government is up to. Yeah, that's one of the conundrums right now. I mean, this is started out anyway as a counterintelligence investigation. You know, the, it's become public. It, there are aspects of this, I think, that are really important. When you look at it from a historical context, for, for instance, you know, one of the, the, the key sources in, in the Watergate issue was an, an FBI special agent. And so uh, individuals that have information, if there's concern that it may, the, you know, things aren't going the way that they should be or they're not going to be able to make the case, could that be a reason for, for these leaks, at least to get the information out there to address an issue that's beyond an operation or a source or a method, but actually involves the security of the republic? Yeah, I, I can see why people would think that way. John, did you want to add to that? I just wanted to add one thing. A lot of these leaks, are, there's sort of talk around this that there's a deep state of people in the law enforcement and intelligence community that are trying to undermine the president. And I want to make it clear from my understanding is I don't think that's the case. There are a lot of leaks here, but like many leaks in this town, they tend to come from the White House or Congress or people who are backed brief on pieces of information. And when that comes out, that's very frustrating. But I've seen very little that looks like it's come out with the kind of detail that's coming from the professionals in the FBI or the CIA, the information that, that is behind the, this look. So frustrating, yes, but so far I don't think this stuff is, is, is the professionals are trying to undermine the administration in any way. All right. John Seifer, Frank Montoya, thank you both very much. Thanks. You bet. Thank you.